particular that has to be the case before you? Well, first of all, any judge, James, that I would appoint, you have to make sure that they'll honor the state and federal constitution. There is a, there is a thing with regard to judicial activism going around in this country. The founding fathers of this great country, and I've written six books, and I've written on the Constitution. The founding fathers set forth principles and wrote a document that's the greatest document on, in this world. And it really determines our principles. You can't interpret that by putting your own meaning. You need to make sure you interpret the Constitution based upon those principles and what the founding fathers intended. That's the most important thing for me, not to be active and legislate at the bench, but to do the right thing and honor and follow the state and the federal constitution. But you want to make sure that the person adheres to your values, the things you just said. Is there a particular uh, thing in the background that's important to them? If, if, they, life, honor, is it if they honor the fundamental values in the constitution and that framework, then that is going to be good enough for me. Just be a judgment call. It will be a judgment call like anything, whenever you're appointing a judge. It's a judgment call. But you get a good sense. I've hired a lot of people. And you get a good sense when you're looking them right in the face, eye to eye. And you ask some tough questions, like I've been asked, and like I ask as well. And we'll be able to make that determination. Is there a constitutional question that you want to be sure that the judges can work on? Well, the candidate. As a candidate, as a human being, my wife Jenny is here, and she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> my dad, Bobby, my mom, Shirley, no, and my brother, Chuck, who's a United States Marine, no. You know, for example, my wife called and said, hey, grab a bottle, buy a bottle of milk for us coming home the other night from a campaign event, and instead of going to the corner store where you can get gas and the milk might be $3 a gallon, I'll go over to Hannaford's and make that extra trip because I want to get it for $1.79 and when it's $1.79, I'm happy. But you know, as governor and as commissioner, I have already shown frugality, fiscal responsibility, to take the largest department in state government. I was appointed at a time we had a 300 projected million dollar deficit in 2003. And I was asked to take over the largest department and control the spending and we went in there and we did a great job. We kept our four years of spending in check, level budgets, and returned $143 million. No commissioner has ever done that. And that's because I wanted to make sure my department heads knew that that is a key ingredient of a leader. Someone that's going to watch every dime and care about the taxpayers of the state. Like my dad did, a Democrat, and we're not going to hold it against you. And <laughs> trackers, trackers, listen, we're not holding it against you. But listen, we're all going to work together because my father always was opposed to a sales or income tax. He was a businessman. We grew up in a small family business, and we know about frugality. Eric, one word describes you as a candidate. Certainly.